What do we need to do? We have to make sure to recruit his teachers and find out the best grade and which teachers have the best grade mm -hmm. and have like random people in the grade. Find the, find the student with the best grade and find the teacher with the best average grade. Okay. And a reminder of the box. A group of variables. Inception. Code inception. Tutorials point C strings, tutorials point curve. So that
personal features. Um, you know, using a string, which is just a list of characters. Um, we're running questions of this so far. Alright, we'll do a quick example, very short one. Let's talk about how structures work. I'm going to create the student. So the structure is a custom data type. I can instantiate this. So how do I do that? What do I write? variable is student. Now there's a name for that variable. I'll call this uh, student one. That's it. I've created a variable called student one in the data type of student. Now the definition for the data type is right up here. It says that every student has what? A name and a grade. A name and a grade. The name is a type string. Is of type float. So if I were to give student one a name, I would write student one dot name equals Susie, or whatever name I want to give the student. Student one dot grade equals let's say Susie's not doing too well. She's got a point five mm -hmm. one clear. Susie's in trouble. We don't have any questions with this so far. Just type a variable, you type a dot, and whatever you want to access. Notice that when I first typed it, when I first typed student one, when I first typed a dot, what happened? It gave you two options. It gives you the option. It says, I looked at your, your data type, and the compiler, the, the IDE, uh, Microsoft Studio, knows I've created my own data type. And it knows that my data type is storing a grade and a name. Now eventually, though, it wants the teacher to keep track of the student. So I'll make the teacher. What will I type? Teacher. I'll type teacher instead of the data type. Call it teacher zero. Now what does the teacher have? The teacher has a student roster and roster size. That's exactly right. I'll do roster size first. I'll say roster size equals four. And then, because this is an array, I need to initialize the array. All I've been doing is initializing variables that have been declared right here. Can we go back to again? Okay. It's making it. It's coming to the final. I need to use variables. So it's all declaration in. You declare the variable. You declare it exists. You want some implementation. Giving it an initial value. Do any operation until that variable is storing something. That's actually something that is storing the compiler thing you just used. So it's greater than a single teacher, teacher zero. I've given teacher zero roster size variable, teacher zero dot roster size, value of four. And lastly, I'll make that list of students. Teacher zero dot roster, which is the variable, equals new student. What size? Four. More appropriately, I can even just say roster size. The reason why that's better than typing a four is let's say I want to make a five. I have to change here, and then I would have to change here. And as a result, the, you can change it while you're in the roster size. Only I can change it in one place now. Gotcha. That's really important. How do you access the hierarchy to change all of a certain variable? Say that again? To change what? All of a variable name. I think you showed us twice, I just forgot. To change all the variable Like, I wanted to change all roster to uh, a different name. Like, uh, you mean like this? Yeah. And now I have to say list equals. This is really weighted. Yeah. Let's say I want to change this to student one. Let's say I want to Uh, roster. 
And a roster is a what? A uh, student. It's an uptight student, but what is it? It's not just a student by itself. It's an array of students. To be more accurate, it's a pointer. That's why I use the asterisk. It's a pointer to a student. It points at the first student in the list. So when I say teacher's do that roster equals new student, Roster size. And currently, what is it going to do to all the students? Give them all A's and the same name. They're all going to have the same name, they're all going to have the same grade. So from here, we'll be want to do something random, something uh, dynamic. So they're going to understand so far that you can instantiate a structure, you can declare one, you can create a new variable of that type, and use the dot, the period key, to access things stored there. So in this line, I'm saying, go to this structure, go to this uh, copy of it, go to this instance, grab its list, go to the right number in the list, and then set the grade. So it's the grade in student inside the roster of the teacher. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now this leaves a couple of things that this is definitely not completed over yet. Um, because we need a list of teachers. We have to go deeper. So instead of being one teacher, I need to get one. Roster size. My previous roster size. Random. How many teachers do I want? Let's come up with a range for a random number. I never want zero teachers, do I? No. No, I do nothing. It's split immediately. Let's go with a minimum. How? What's the minimum number of teachers you want? Five. Five? Okay. And how high do you want? What will our maximum be? Ten. Ten? Ah, let's make it a little more variable than that. Let's say, let's say we can do five to fifty. If I want 5 to 50 teachers, what's the range of numbers I want? 5 to 50. <laughs> 45. I want 45. There are 45 different numbers. When I ask the range, you could say 5 to 50. Um, that technically wasn't incorrect. But uh, when I say range, I want to just subtract one from the other. That's all it means. 
Six plus five, I said fifty one. So where's the one go? Forty six? Okay. Which means divide by that number and take the remainder. Okay. If I did modulus forty five and it ever randomly generated the number forty five, forty five divided by forty five has what as a remainder? Zero. Zero. It's got no remainder. It's a perfect division. So I could never make the number forty five if I left it with modulus forty five. If I say modulus forty six, the highest number it can give me is a forty five. Once it gets to 46, it starts back at zero. Hmm. So I either have zero plus five, which is my bottom number, five, or 55, sorry, 45 plus five, which is 50. 50. The highest one. Exactly. Okay. So remember, whenever you're trying to do a range of numbers, start with the scale, then the offset. Right? The same slope line formula. Roster 
We have fewer random names than we have okay, so five features. I'm going to do something one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I think that might work. Um, Miss